Whoa, happy Wine Wednesday. Here we are. Happy Wednesday, Wine Happy Hour. Canadian wine lovers, welcome, welcome to all of you across the country, from Victoria to Halifax, and in between, you guys already, like I can see, I can see the amount of people tuning in, just skyrocketing right out of the gate. Great job. So we're live here from West Kelowna, snowy, cold. It's cold, excuse my language, and it's cold as shit around here right now. It's been I didn't know it was cold. That's terrible. I am cold. <laughs> that is cold. Vicky, happy Wine Wednesday. Daryl, hello, 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 guys. Jeez, that is an exciting, an exciting show tonight. It's 5 o'clock here, 508. Okay, sorry, guys, we're a little bit behind. Oh, my fault. Can't deal with technology, darn. No, so, no, no, it's not his fault. It's mine. We actually did something kind of cool. And what we figured out was we're actually live on the iSellers page as well, I believe. So it's kind of fun. Uh, <laughs> and in a minute here, we're going to have some really special guests joining us. So we're really excited. Um, yeah. So how's I, it going, been, Carl Boucher? It, yeah, it's doing great. I haven't seen you, you all day. What? You know what? We had a great day. We had a fun day. We need to tell one. Okay, everyone, we're going to tell you that we have a very cool spe special guest joining us in a few minutes. But because our life is like in the, like Mira and I's life is like a fairy tale book story that every day there is something pretty darn freaking cool happening in our life. And today we were called up to go up in on the Naramata bench um, to go visit at Moraine Winery, a uh, cool place, uh, just like midway on the bench, 10 years old winery. Uh, Oleg, the owner, wanted to do a little tasting with us, and we had an amazing time tasting such cool wines. Moraine was named, like, I don't know, number three or no, uh, in the number four. Top five winery of the year this year by uh, Wine Align, the small uh, small winery. Anyway. And cool. we said, what the heck? We've never heard of these people. And they live right nearby our house. They have a winery here. So we went to see them. And it was an amazing story. Very similar to who we're going to chat with in a minute, actually. He was a very successful mechanical engineer who turned... Uh, oh, we just lost Adnan there. Who turned... Um, Winery owner. Yeah. 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 Anyway, you know, like that tells me that if I want to own a winery one day, I need to be an engineer. If I'm an, in if I'm an engineer, probably I'll be able to be a winery owner someday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, no, we tasted like, I will tell you something, Syrah Alert here. I tasted a 2019 Syrah Oh, it was pretty darn freaking fantastic this afternoon. Mira it had was. a little gift. The owner gave a gave her a little like go to go bottle to go home. <laughs> yeah, so, she just yeah. It to the door. He's like, you need to take this. You like this a lot. So I was like, wow, thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Oleg uh, liked uh, Mira quite a bit, but that's fine because he gave me a heck of a tour. Um, Brand new equipment. This guy on, oh, like, it was fantastic. It was awesome. So, yeah. And after that, we did a quick little stop at Hillside Winery to go pick up the new sample because uh, Carl Seller Alert, there's a change on Carl Seller. Hillside Winery is changing their 2018 Pinot Noir for the outstanding 2019 coming up. So, uh, coming up. So, yeah, we're going to have a new tasting note coming up. Also, Black Market Wine Company is changing its secret. Red Society White for the Unsanctioned Sauvignon Blanc 2020. Uh, so we promise with Carl Seller, things are going to be ever changing. We're going to keep you posted. Uh, so there's a few couple new wines coming up that way. But this week is let's let's give you like like the bulk of what is going on here because it's the last regular Carl's. Carl's Wine Club feature of the week this week. The last one. And we save the cream of the crop with the end. We save one of the best, some of the best wine that we've tasted all year. 
for this specific offer this week. And we are featuring Ice Cellar out of Niagara. A six pack include, well, a six pack plus two bonus bottle that um, we are featuring this week. Two white, six reds are available. But to me, when I went out to Niagara in uh, in uh, in uh, in September, well, first and foremost, Marcel Morgenstern, our good friend at Bellaterra, when I was planning the Cabernet Sauvignon Day, he said, "You know what, Carl? You need to taste uh, Ice Cellar." I was like, "I've never tasted Ice Cellar. I heard from them before. I heard that they are amazing. They're the house of reds." But I've never tasted them. He said, let me take care of that for you. He went out. He went to see Adnan. Got a sample bottle of uh, of Capsule. Shipped it over my way. And we tasted it for International Cabernet Sauvignon Day. And you know when you have no expectation? Like I had 25 caps off in front of me. So I'm going one by one. And at some point I'm like, whoa, what the heck? It was Ice Cellar Caps of 2017 absolutely blew my mind. And from there, from the first sip, I knew I had one of the top 10 wine of the year in my glass. I knew it. It was a no-brainer. So anyhow, uh, and what I do, I, I, every varietal, varietal, great varietal day, if it's like the Rosé Day, Chardonnay Day, Merlot Day, Cap Soft Day, I always take the 20, 25 bottles that we open the night of, the day after, to a group. The day, the, the day after, I take the whole box and we taste it as a group. And I ask everyone to read the wines. And, uh, oh, guess what? That 2017 Cap Soft. The 2017 Cabernet Sauvignon from Ice Cellar. We had a group the day after International Cabernet Sauvignon. Day, we had a group of almost 20 people, winery owners, winemakers, wine lovers. It was like all like a vineyard managers. There was like a whole panel of people, and we were um, we were all at uh, a black market wine company with a bunch of different people and. Everyone, without exception, put number one on their list that cap that day. So that told me that I was not in my bubble. I was not on an island telling myself stories that doesn't make any sense. No, I was bang on in my assessment of ice cellar Cabernet Sauvignon. Best cab in the country. So yeah, I and the fun thing is I, I'm now insisting we tasted it against a few international ones at around the same price points, right? And there was no because I haven't tasted a ton of international wines. I've been tasting through the pandemic all Canadian wines. So again, like Carl, I said, well, maybe it's just me. I've just developed a taste for this. Well, we threw in a few international ones too that were really nice names and good good uh price point and same thing. They just couldn't get anywhere near at the level that this wine was at. So we were pretty thrilled to discover it. So let's not keep him waiting much longer, Carl. Let's bring uh, Adnan Isel on. And I saw his wife, Elif, as well. I'd be super thrilled to see her if she comes back, but I'm not sure if... Oh, yes, she's still there. Okay, so let's bring him on. Hey, guys, how's it there going? There you go. Hello, hello. hello. <laughs> good evening, good evening, you guys. How are you doing? Very well, very well. Uh, we're joining you from Oakville, not Niagara. Uh, oh. Yeah, we live uh, about 80 kilometers to the winery. So uh, we, this is a suburb of Toronto, uh, Oakville. Mm -hmm. and We're joining from our home tonight. Uh, like yourself, uh, we have a uh, we had a snowy day today. Not much snow, maybe a few centimeters here, uh, but it's it was very cold. Uh, but we are happy to uh, to be with you tonight. We're I'm so happy to have you. I'm seeing behind you, uh, Elif and Adnan, a red a red bottle, and I am thinking here. Is it the warm stuff that you guys just put it? The new, the new red velvet. Is it what I'm thinking? The new yep, yep, yep. That's that's right. We are going to 
have it tonight after <laughs> the tasting. So Great. This, uh, yeah, this is uh, our newest wine, uh, first ever Apacimento uh, wines from uh, 2019 vintage. And we just bottled a week ago uh, this wine after 24 months in uh, in the barrel. And this is a, a Cabernet Sauvignon, uh, 67% Cabernet Sauvignon, dried, uh, Apacimento style. And uh, the rest is Malbec and Merlot. Uh, uh, this is, I think, uh, the biggest and uh, boldest red we ever made uh, up to now. It's, it has 16% alcohol. Uh, uh, boom! <laughs> boom! <laughs> this is exciting because when you see the biggest, the boldest, um, I well, know that the already some of the wines that we tasted from you, people we know said there must be some apacimento in there because they're so rich and bold. No? Yeah, uh, I heard that a lot, but. Uh, uh, to be, uh, uh, I mean, uh, to be frank, we never made a passamento before. Uh, yeah. If you don't count, uh, we are late pickers. Uh, we, we pick our grapes very, very late. If you uh, count that as a passamento on the wine, that's a passamento. But we never dried further dried mm -hmm. inside the winery. Uh, that that's our first dried uh, apacimento style uh, and we don't make that every year for example last year 2020 we didn't make any of them because everything was apacimento last year it was the super hot year uh, so you don't need to uh, bring the sugars higher you don't need to bring the alcohol higher last year but this year uh, the, like everybody else uh, uh, the the weather was not so good uh, and the sugars were low. And this is uh, one of the uh, years that you want to uh, intensify the uh, flavor and the uh, sugar in the wine. So we are making another red velvet this year. I, uh, so I completely, I understand uh, Jake, what you mean because well, I've been hearing for a lot of, uh, of people from your area that the summer was great. But t and excuse my language, shit hit the fan pretty pretty bad in the fall. The rain started and didn't stop, and I think it threw a wrench in a lot of growers and and uh, winery owners' plan. This fall was pretty uh, was pretty harsh for you guys. Yeah, this year uh, hasn't been great. Uh, we picked, by the way, everything. We don't have anything hanging on the in the vineyard, luckily because it's thought today. Uh, but this year we had, uh, we almost didn't decide when to pick. Uh, the mother nature decided you should pick that day. You should pick that day. Uh, we, we didn't have this uh, last year's luxury on uh, choosing the picking days. Uh, but uh, the wines are almost finishing fermentations in the cellar. And we have to work twice as much as uh, last year in the cellar this year to make the wines in consistently good quality. Uh, I think they are very good. They are tasting great. Uh, but we have to do a lot of things uh, at the winery, uh, like the uh, pump overs, punch downs, uh, so many things. Uh, it was a little a bit more. A little bit more of assistance and a little bit more of hard work because, uh, yeah, Mother Nature made it a little harder. I'm seeing, I'm looking at Elif right now, and I know that she's drinking a little white here. Elif, what's in your glass tonight? It's 2017 Chardonnay. Oh, cheers to that. That's what I have, too. <laughs> there you go. I like it. It's bold. It's rich. The yes. oak is well integrated. There's a beautiful spice at the end. Uh, fantastic Chardonnay. Well done. Before we talk about the wines, I would like, and that's like what we love to, uh, to bring to our members. It's the story behind the success that you have at the winery. But before that ice cellar, the building was up, the, the, before the vineyard got mature and the vines grew, there is a story behind that. And Elif and Adnan, I would love to hear from your uh, 
native Turkey all the way to Canada. What was your journey? And I heard that Anna, like your family, the, vine, the growing vines, growing grapes, it's not something new in your family. So take us into your journey all the way here today uh, in 2021. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that was a uh, like quite a journey. Uh, let me explain, like in in a few minutes. Uh, so we, uh, I came to Canada. Uh, I mean, I was in the construction business uh, uh, as being an engineer. Uh, the first time I uh, visit Canada was in uh, nineteen ninety nine. Uh, to meet with some uh, building product manufacturers. And uh, I never forget that day. It was uh, January 30th of 1999. And uh, it, was, uh, it was a snow day, one meter snow and minus 20 <laughs> degrees Celsius. And I thought to myself, uh, how could people live here? Uh, like a meter of snow. Uh, at that time, to be uh, honest, uh, I didn't quite like, but uh, next following year, I came to uh, visit Vancouver in 2000, year 2000, uh, much uh, in September, and it was so beautiful, uh, like the, just the beginning of fall. Uh, so we have two sons now, uh, they are uh, at university, both of them at university. Uh, so we uh, decided to immigrate to Canada in uh, 2004 for their higher education. They were at uh, elementary school at that time, uh, both. So uh, we immigrated uh, under an investor immigration program. Uh, so we uh, landed in 2006. I set up uh, my engineering company. I transferred to here, uh, which which was uh, in the pre-engineered uh, steel building business. Uh, and then, uh, we, if you ask if you if you if we drink wine at that time, we were not wine drinkers. In Turkey, we have a, like, um, a, a high alcohol spirit is very similar to Greek uzo. Uh, we call it rakı. It's made from fresh grapes. It's 45% alcohol. Uh, we were drinking that. Uh, yeah, whoa, 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 whoa. Did you say 45%? Yeah, minimum 45, 48%. No, oh, minimum. Important. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Uh, <laughs> and we were not uh, wine drinkers at the time. And uh, if we go to a restaurant uh, at that time, uh, we order, um, if you have to order a wine, uh, we order just a red wine or a white wine at that time. Didn't even hear about Chardonnay, Merlot, Merlot Cabernet Sauvignon, are the, are the uh, grape varieties, wine varieties. Uh, yeah. So we were so out of this world. Uh, uh, my ancestors uh, had vineyards in Turkey, like, for centuries, at least for five centuries, but never made wine with that. Uh, Turkey right now is the fourth largest grape grower in the world. If you look to the acreage, the vineyard area, it, it comes after uh, Spain, uh, France, and Italy. Turkey comes uh, fourth. Uh, but uh, only two, three percent of those grapes are going into winemaking. Uh, mostly is going to raisins, uh, uh, fresh grapes, uh, rack making, other uh, things. Uh, so uh, that was a big change uh, how we end up with buying an empty land in Niagara. Uh, if you. <laughs> if you allow me i can talk that <laughs> oh, all, uh, night. all night <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know that's an amazing story to get here and i think your journey it's even more interesting for when you were here because from an engineer you decided that you wanted to start a winery and it's not like if you hired a bunch of people to do it for you you did everything yourself you taught yourself how to plant the vines. You taught yourself how to make the wine. And also, one thing that I learned when I was went to see you, it's your winery. It's not like any, uh, any other winery. Your winery, it's 100% geothermal. 
and you designed the whole thing. So now I would like you to tell our people how do you turn from an engineer, very successful engineer, to a winemaker? That's a pretty interesting twist of it. Yeah, uh, that was a little bit uh, because of uh, necessity at the time. Uh, you know, the wine industry, or uh, if you decide to set up a winery from scratch, uh, you have to spend everything from your pocket. You can't get any loan from the banks uh, unless you create some cash flow. And if you're if you're like us, uh, if you're buying an empty fallow land. Uh, with with no vineyard building, uh, no vineyard plantings on it, no building on it. So uh, we had to we had to be very careful with our uh, careful with our limited money. So we purchased the 60 acre land in Niagara uh, in 2010, uh, and there was did, nothing. Uh, sorry, and then did you see 60? Uh, 2010, 60 acres, yeah. six zero. 60, 60 acres of 60 acres, just a small, small little piece of land, right? Yeah, it's uh, I think it's the <laughs> right size of uh, for our uh, like uh, production uh, targets. Uh, and uh, you purchase the land, and then uh, we started building, designing, and building the building. It's uh, we have a 20,000 square feet building uh, everything is under one roof uh, and uh, we started next year uh, putting tile drainage into the land you can't just go and plant the vineyard uh, you have to spend a lot under the uh, ground uh, so like we, we buried about 90 kilometers of uh, tile drainage under 60 acres every row has tile drainage under it and uh, you have to build a building. And uh, luckily, we had time to learn to make wine in the first three, four years because you don't get any grapes in the first three, four years. Uh, and we didn't have the, yeah, to be frank, we didn't have the budget to hire a winemaker at that time. Uh, so I was attending all the seminars. Uh, I was volunteering in the neighboring wineries, uh, free free labor, just to learn how they <laughs> do the things. Uh, so the, yeah, that's uh, uh, how do I became a winemaker. It's become a, because of our budget uh, uh, has not room for to hire a, a full time winemaker. That's how it started. Wow, amazing. And now and the, the winery became self-sufficient when the grapes started to, the, the vine started to get older. And when was your first vintage? Uh, the first, we had a very small vintage in 2014. We made about 300 cases uh, from our estate uh, grapes. Uh, and now uh, we have 45 acres under wine. Uh, so out of six acres, 45 is net planted. Uh, but uh, half of this 45 acres is uh, three years old. So we, we haven't got any uh, grape yet. Uh, so next year, our production will uh, double. I'm, I'm guessing if, if everything goes well. Uh, and our... Uh, Aim is uh, to be 100% estate uh, winery. All the fruit is, uh, grapes are coming from our own land that we farm. And uh, will be around eight to 10,000 case production winery a year, uh, making high quality uh, wines. Uh, because uh, you do, as a small winery, you don't have a, a big chance to survive uh, with making $10, $15 wines, uh, trying to compete with, there are two big guys here, two big companies uh, making industrial wines, uh, like millions of cases. So they, uh, they, they control that market. So, uh, and we don't want to make those, uh, what I call industrial wines uh, or stainless steel wines. Uh, uh, so, uh, <laughs> 
so this is uh, how we started and we are here now <laughs> <laughs> i i love when you mentioned and you mentioned that earlier when i was with you this is some stainless steel wine i love that expression i need to use it more <laughs> so uh one more thing before we start talking about the wine i want to i want you to tell me a little bit more about the winery just the winery itself, the, because that's kind of funny. My oldest son is in grade nine, and he came and he came today. He came home and he said, "Dad, I have a project at 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 school. I need to do a project on geothermal." And I started to laugh. He said, "What are you laughing?" I said, "I don't know. I'm talking to someone tonight who's going to tell me more about geothermal." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so how a winery yeah. like yours, like who's run, like who's like you do everything for a a 10,000 cases of wine a year. Everything is under his own power. Yeah. That's how it yeah. works. There's no, yeah. like you're not attached to any other source of power. You generate yeah. your own thing. Yeah. Uh, to be frank, you're attached. You need to be attached to the grid because you're using it as a battery, the grid. So if you, uh, you're consuming electricity at night, but you don't generate any electricity from solar at night. So so in the in the morning you are sending to the grid feeding the grid and in, at night you're taking back but the thing that uh, we have never connected to natural gas for heating purposes or any other purpose even there is a, a natural gas line in front of our building uh, and we were approached many times with the natural gas companies to connect uh, but <laughs> Yeah, but uh, we have always, uh, because this is our retirement project and we want to be uh, like uh, uh, respectful to the environment. Uh, so I designed a system uh, to heat uh, to heat and, uh, and cool the winery, the building, plus uh, to use in the winemaking uh, process, uh, chilling and uh, heating purposes. So we have uh, five uh, systems running geothermal, and it's, uh, in, in winter, it uh, it takes the heat from underground, six feet deep from the uh, under the vineyard. Uh, we have about two acres of land dedicated to geothermal field outside. So we're uh, pulling the heat underneath, six feet down from the soil. We just it just run with an electricity, a little bit compressor electricity, and uh, so it doesn't burn any fossil fuels. And in the summer, uh, the cycle reverses, and uh, we're taking the coolness, or we're dumping the heat uh, to the ground, taking from inside the winery. So it's a very cool system, and uh, with the attached solar uh, power, uh, so. We, we, we are generating about uh, like 120 percent of our uh, consumption like we are we are giving 20 percent more uh, like is it, we are donating uh, to the grid uh, that amount so they're making money with you that's what you're telling me yeah the net metering system is uh, a <laughs> if you if you overuse uh, they charge you but if you if you overproduce they don't you. <laughs> they don't pay you back, right? <laughs> that's how, uh, how that's <laughs> oh my God, this is crazy. Wow, I, I love that. This I think it's one of the favorite part of my story. I couldn't believe that. Uh, so now you're producing a total of what, 10 to 12 wines around? Yeah, yeah. we want to be uh, focused on certain style of wines. Uh, uh, our vineyard, our 45 acres vineyard is planted to 95% red grapes. And uh, most of them is uh, the biggest planting is Cabernet Sauvignon. Almost half of the vineyard is Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, we have only one white uh, planted to uh, our uh, in our vineyard, a Chardonnay. The Sauvignon Blanc that we are going to taste today is from a grower, a well-respected, well-known Wismar family grower that... Uh, uh, that's a single vineyard, uh, Sauvignon Blanc. And uh, so, um, like, uh, we're, we're making a, a few uh, Bordeaux blends, but we're making the single varieties of those blends, Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc, uh, Merlot. Uh, so uh, our intention is uh, to be at least 90, 95%, if we can do 100% estate uh, grapes, uh, 
because uh, I love to uh, control uh, our uh, farming as much as possible. Uh, because uh, maybe you mentioned that uh, we have uh, we have been uh, farming organically uh, since last 16 months. And uh, we are pursuing a certified organic uh, certification uh, at the end of 36 months period. Yeah, so that was my next, uh, that was my segue towards organic because you're not only geothermal, you're not only like all of these good things. Now you're pursuing the, um, the organic certification, correct? And you're right in the midst of the, in the midst of it, right? Yeah. So uh, in order to be uh, uh, certified organic you need at least 36 months of uh, like uh, uh, records that uh, you can uh, show the uh, part uh, the organization uh, ecocert or procert uh, uh, because they are auditing your everything your, your uh, spray records your fertilizer records everything so we uh, we almost uh, finished our 16th month and we have about 20 months more months to go uh, and they will evaluate all of our records they will come and audit us and uh, we are hoping to be uh, certified organic so we can put on our wines that is uh, these are certified organic starting from 2023 uh, wines vintage wines that's amazing. I think I'm going to bring Mira back in because I think she's dying to be part of that conversation as well. Mira, how's it going? Hi. <laughs> I, I, can't, I told you when I came back, when I came back from that trip, I told you that I met with something, someone very, very special. I didn't lie to you. Isn't it a crazy story? It is an amazing story, Adnan. I, I don't know if there's any other geothermal wineries in Canada. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Special. Uh, uh, geothermal <laughs> winery, I, I'm not sure if this is the, uh, we are not the first, uh, there are so many uh, wineries, not so um, yeah, many wineries, I, I would say. Uh, oh, really? I know, I know Hidden Bench is uh, earlier, uh, they, they have been using this uh, before us. Mm. Uh, but uh, I, I like the idea and, you know, everything is going uh, into like clean energy. You know, we did enough to our uh, uh, planet and uh, mm -hmm. uh, with all those uh, fossil fuels, all those uh, coal burnings. And uh, I always uh, try to uh, stay away from uh, those, uh, like, I, I don't drive an electric car yet, but as my... Uh, it's my next thing to, to do. Uh, and I, I strongly believe that everything will be uh, in the future uh, will be run by electric. And uh, those elec that electric will come from renewable, clean uh, resources. Sources. Yeah, no, that's a wonderful vision. And it's amazing how you, you know, just started living it <laughs> in your own life. That's great. Um, I, uh, you know, at every point in the night, I'm kind of looking at, we've asked you guys, uh, here with us, you know, what's in your glass. I've seen some pretty cool things. I think Joan is, Joan is having a 2013 Syrah, which I am very, uh, excited to hear more about Joan at some point. Um, but, uh, what I'm wondering now, Carl, is what is in my glass? So <laughs> Carl I, you're, you're... glasses of wine. I don't know what's in there. <laughs> so in your glass, Mira, you have the same thing that El you and Ellie for sharing a bottle of wine tonight. You both mm -hmm. have a 2017 Chardonnay. So Mira, you can oh. cheer with you can cheer with Ellie. Yes. Uh, Mira, you guys are Cheers. sharing the same wine. <laughs> and I also I also pour you a little bit of uh, the Pinot Noir, the 2019. It's a brand new release of the 2019 Pinot Noir uh, because I'm a I'm very very uh, selfish i keep the good stuff behind me i have the cab solve in the arena behind me uh, <laughs> i've tried some of those too they're very good no, i'm just joking I'm maybe just with joking. our dinner later <laughs> yeah you got it that's why that's why hey mira what do how about you put the link 
in the in the common box oh, right yes. now for people for people that. to order because I can see a lot of uh, of people are asking questions about the wines. People are extremely into the the story behind it and your passion, guy. Um, and yeah, if we can put the link because the wines are now live. We are showcasing this week until Sunday night. Uh, six wines, eight wines with uh, Ice Cellar. We have the two whites, the Sauvignon Blanc from the Wismer Vineyard. We also have the Chardonnay 2017. We have the 2019 Pinot Noir, 2017 Syrah, and also to the new 2017 Arena. Uh, ooh, I tasted for the first time this week. I gave it a 94 points. This is an absolute beauty. Some people will say it's a big, it's a huge wine. I think, personally, there's a big wine with finesse. There's a lot of finesse into that wine. So much complexity and intricacy between mint uh, herbs, uh, dark fruit, spice, but the complexity and the length is absolutely amazing. We also have the 2017 Cabernet Sauvignon that won, hands down, our best Cabernet Sauvignon of the year this year. I give it an open an open score because I couldn't see how I, I know I was tasting 94 points, but I can see more and more coming out of that wine. So I, I give it a 94 to a 96 points, but uh, with a couple more years of age, a bit of, uh, of aging. And we have two wines uh, as a bonus bottle that we have the, uh, the other red blend. The, uh, I'm not sure if I pronounce it properly. Wiana Wanda. Is it proper? Yep. 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 There you yep. go. Yep. And the big, big boy, the big boy. Yeah. The 2017 <laughs> Reserve Cabernet. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You need a piece of yeah. meat with that wine. This is yeah. big and juicy. Nap I call it the Napa Valley style with our Canadian acidity in there. So a better wine than Napa make. <laughs> so that's what we have in offer this week. Uh, I want to talk about your style of winemaking because I'm I discover after a couple of times that I taste there's a, a a house style that you can discover by tasting many of your wines and these are big bold unapologetic type of wine with use of oak you're not holding back on the on the oak and mm -hmm. you're not shying away from that. Can you please tell us what your philosophy when it's time for Oak Barrel? Yeah, uh, so uh, our vineyard is about uh, a little bit inland. If you know, uh, yeah, you, you've been to Niagara. And we are about eight kilometers to uh, Lake Ontario and uh, eight kilometers to Niagara River, which have a, both has a, have a, a moderating effect, you know, uh, the, big body of water, uh, Lake Ontario, is helping in winter uh, to warm up the air uh, because uh, the, uh, the lake rarely freezes. Uh, but in the summer, uh, if you are away from the lake, like us, 8, 10, 10 kilometers, uh, you get less the cooling effect of the uh, lake in the summer, So, which, which I prefer. Uh, because uh, the growing season is from uh, May to November is more important for me because uh, we need to accumulate sugar, we need the ripeness. Uh, so um, I, I didn't want to be just beside a, a big body of water. Uh, uh, this land was uh, our dreamland and uh, it has a very unique microclimate that uh, I always... Uh, Tell that, and I have proof that uh, because I, uh, the first thing I did on the on the land was to put weather stations, and now I have eleven years of weather data on my computer, daily highs and lows, uh, so I can uh, measure the growing degree days, what we call growing degree days. That number gives you which variety uh, works best in your on your land. If your land is uh, a little bit on the cool side, you want to go with whites, more whites, uh, white grapes, and maybe Pinot Noir Gamay. 
But if you have high accumulation of heat during the growing season, you could go with Cabernet, late ripening reds, uh, Syrah, Capso. So, uh, and uh, when I purchased the land, I I had I I have I had a uh, very old uh, gentleman neighbor, and uh, he he has a cash crop just next to my my land. He's uh, he's uh, uh, cropping uh, soybeans, and uh, when I chat him about ten years ago, uh, he said he told me that uh, he had a vineyard in his land about 30, 40 years ago. And uh, with a government program, he uprooted all the vineyard. Now is the cash crop. So I, I told him, why did you uproot all, all your vineyard? He said, um, at that time, uh, you know, the hybrid grapes, uh, like Concord, uh, those kind uh, kind of uh, second quality grapes were uh, planted, and uh, their Grapes, uh, his grapes are uh, ripening so early in the season uh, before everyone else. The winery was not open, like he was ripening everything uh, in September. And uh, the winery he was con uh, contracted was not open to accept the grapes, his grapes. So he, he's, it was enough for him uh, to uproot <laughs> everything. So it gave me an idea. Oh, that that's this area is has a uh, like a very high heat unit, so it can it could be good with uh, because I was after uh, big reds. Uh, so with the help of my weather stations, uh, I uh, I saw that that he was uh, telling the truth, and uh, so we we planted mostly Cabernet Sauvignon. And uh, you know, Cabernet Sauvignon is the yeah. Go ahead. You're telling me that if today we're drinking the best Cabernet Sauvignon made in Canada, it's because of your neighbor, your <laughs> old neighbor who completely give up because his grape were ripened too early and no one wanted to accept any grape to process. And he no, says, screw I, that. I'm no. out of that business. It's a pain in the butt. <laughs> and because of that, that's why today we're drinking the best Cabernet Sauvignon in the country. Yes. Ah, so, okay. So it was a great of, story. It's turning into even better right now. I'm yeah. loving it. <laughs> yeah, uh, Carl, you're too kind, but I can't. Nobody can say that I'm making the best cabin. We're just scratching the uh, surface of the uh, grape. Uh, we're trying to make, and I, I, I'm seeing that every year uh, we are making a better uh, wine. Uh, just learning from our. Uh, exper uh, experiences and our mistakes, uh, but I am uh, that. What I'm uh, trying to say is that the decisions that we made early, about eight nine, nine years ago, uh, to plant uh, those grape varieties was uh, correct, and uh, we are highly benefiting from that. Uh, those decisions, and uh, I, with the global warming happening, and uh, I. Can, I can even say in my 11 years of uh, farming, I, I see the uh, the winters and the summers are getting warmer, uh, more unpredictable. But uh, can you imagine like in 10, 20 years, uh, we will have a uh, warmer. It's not good for, for the planet, but it's good for our vineyard and uh, good for Niagara in general, for grape growers. Uh, because the problem here in Niagara is the uh, uh, number one problem is the winter kill. If you if you see less than minus twenty degrees Celsius, uh, your whole plant dies. Yeah. And the second one, uh, which is uh, also important, you don't get enough heat in the growing yeah. season to ripen every year your uh, your grapes. Uh, that's awesome. How about the barrel program? I know that you're using a lot of oak in your yep. uh, make your wine, and you're not sorry for that. Sometimes people try to down to don't play and say, "Oh yes, but no." This is your philosophy. This is part of your signature. It's part of the wine style, right? Yep. So uh, you. Uh, like you said, you have to be very careful with your uh, oak program. And uh, 
for new wineries like us, uh, you don't have any used barrels. So the first few years, everything was 100% new oak. Uh, because uh, if you go to the market and if you want to buy used barrels, as a, it's a big gamble. I didn't want to play that gamble. So uh, the first few years are like the first year was 100% new oak. The second year was 70% new oak. Uh, but I'm cutting down on the new oak. But the important thing that I want to uh, say that I love oak, either new or used. Uh, and I am keeping my almost all of my uh, wines except one wine, which we are not tasting today, Rosé. Uh, Rosé doesn't go into uh, oak. But even the Sauvignon Blanc, the whites that you are tasting tonight, Sauvignon Blanc and Chardonnay sees uh, French oak. Uh, Sauvignon Blanc, six months, uh, fermented and aged in uh, French oak. And Chardonnay, 12 months, fermented and aged in French oak too. And this is important. It's not only aged in oak. They are fermented, fermented. in oak yeah. as well. Yeah. This is a very important distinction. Yeah, exactly. It's a uh, better fermentation is a uh, like a uh, is a uh, uh, top uh, decision. Uh, uh, like um, especially on whites, yeah. because uh, when uh, just to, uh, I don't want to be seen as snob, but when you um, you are making white wine, you pick the grapes. Uh, we always pick by hand, and uh, you press right away the white grapes. Uh, like we are pressing in half an hour uh, after we cut the grapes from the wines, and uh, you settle the juice. Uh, just a, it's it's a grape juice. You settle the grape juice for two days in a stainless steel tank. So you want to settle all the heavy uh, stuff to the bottom and get rid of that. And then in the second day, we transfer the juice uh, into the barrels. And uh, it's not full, uh, eighty percent full. And uh, we inoculate in the barrel with yeast, and then uh, it start to ferment in the in the barrel. The barrel fermentation is, you know, it's a, like um, I saw that in Burgundy. Uh, everybody is uh, making their high-end Chardonnays in uh, in uh, uh, barrels. Uh, we started in making uh, uh, fermenting in smaller barrels, 225 liters standard barrels. But now we are doing in uh, 500 liters uh, panchons, uh, and I'm very happy with that. Uh, larger uh, oak barrels. Yeah, there's less contact with the surface, right? Yep, that's correct. That's uh, correct. Because on whites, you don't you don't want that uh, uh, barrel has uh, barrels have two purposes on wine. Uh, the first one is uh, to give oak flavor. Uh, like it depends on the if it is a new barrel or old barrel. Uh, to wine. Uh, it's like uh, putting some spice into a meal that you're cooking. Uh, it's, I treat oak as that. But the second uh, uh, thing that uh, oak bells are giving to wine is that uh, it slowly oxidizes the wine through the uh, uh, air penetration or um, uh, oxygen permission uh, from the uh, grains. Uh, it's, it's a very slow oxidation. Uh, uh, it's 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 not I mean uh, it's not in a bad way oxidation it's a very tiny uh, mm, milli, li, <laughs> microns uh, micro uh, oxide uh, yeah. micro oxidation yeah, yeah. yeah. how about with the texture yeah exactly so uh, I'm more interested in the second uh, purpose of the barrel so it slowly oxidizes uh, the wine uh, which ages the wine it rounds the wine and if we go to our big reds uh, the Cabernet Sauvignon Merlot I'm not shy on that uh, those uh, wines to use more uh, newer oak and also smaller berries uh, barrels 225 and uh, those uh, barrels are also medium plus toasted uh, you know uh, it's charred uh, those barrels are charred on an open fire uh, depending on what you wish and, and we use 90% French oak and only 10% uh, 
uh, American oak in some wines, uh, not all wines. Uh, so um, I'm very, very happy with the oak uh, program that we have uh, that uh, in, the, uh, in the winery. And we have not made any red wine or white wine uh, without oak aging yet. No, no uh, stainless steel wine, uh, if you call it. <laughs> <laughs> that's and you know what and that it, it's a conversation that i had with another engineer winery owner this afternoon on the neuromata bench it's about the house style right for him his house style it's all on the finish extracting the minerality and the length on the finish and and for me what i'm seeing in your house style it's the bold, the juicy, uh, but the, in the oak, but the oak is integrated. I don't find the oak in the front part, on the front palate. For me, the oak on your wine show up at the mid palate and follows all the way to the, to the end. And my question to you about that is, is it because you're holding to your wine a little longer before release? And that's an impact of that because... We're seeing here is the 2017, your big red, you are on 2017. For some other wineries, 2017 vintage, it's a library release. Yep. You know, yeah, this is very, uh, so, very different here. Yeah, uh, I wish uh, I could uh, only sell the 2016s now because uh, the wines we are making here is uh, getting better with age. Uh, of course, barrel aging, and after that, bottle aging uh, is getting better. But uh, you have to sell, right? You have to make a living uh, also. <laughs> uh, we, we are selling our 2019 Pinot Noir, for example. It's too early. And for this guy, uh, we bottled a week ago, and uh, this is almost sold out. And uh, <laughs> I heard that people is opening and drinking this Uh a week in the bottle, it, it's under a bottle shock. I'm assuming that this wine, but uh, I am so uh, excited to share this special wine with everyone. So sometimes uh, I'm uh, I'm so quick to release the wine. Uh, the next day we're bottling. Actually, today uh, was a bottling day for us uh, at the winery. We bottled our 2019 Arena. Uh, your taste uh, 2017 today so we bottled uh, 19 today uh, after 24 months in uh, barrels uh, and uh, I'm hoping to release that wine at least two years from now on because it needs it needs to mellow in the bottle uh, that is awesome now okay I'm just seeing something here uh, I saw I saw our friend Simba here just showing up on the screen. And it's so funny that he's coming in because I told Mira, we need a picture of Simba. And I wanted you, Elif, to introduce your, your, uh, your, your tasting room partner because I loved Simba <laughs> when I was there. Uh, <laughs> and I know that he's a very well-known dog in, in, yeah. the, in, the, in the Niagara Peninsula. So yeah. <laughs> thanks for bringing him in here. <laughs> How old is the dog? Nine and a half. Nine and a half, eh? And he follows you every day from home to the winery, correct? Yes, yes, yes. So I have a funny story for you guys, okay? And I will let you go after. I'm so glad to, we have to talk with Simba. But So I'm allergic to dog, personally. So this is my – I have three boys. This is my kid's biggest – that drama in their life. They cannot have a dog. They love, they love the dog. So since we moved to the wine country, we bring them with us to a, like a lot of a winery appointment. Now they start enjoying our winery appointment because they have figured out there's a dog almost at every single winery. Yeah. There is a dog. So for what I know, a winery by the winery name. My my kids know the wineries by the dog's name. So here in the Okanagan, there's Bella's dog. There's Bella's winery. There's Biggie's wineries. There's uh, every winery is what do I know for us. 
Black Market or Desert Hills or Mission Hills or Mount. No, they know these wineries by the winery dogs. Yeah. So, so now I'm 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 happy to introduce to my kids Simba's Winery, yeah. <laughs> aka I <Yeah>. Summer. <laughs> yeah, you said that uh, everybody remembers Simba, yeah. Simba's name, but they always forget our names. Name. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing, but. So I know it's getting late. To, uh, it's getting late down back east. So I will let you go. I want to thank you both for your time, for your generosity of talking about your story, and to bring Simba on the screen. So thank you very much, Mira. Do you have a little something for us? And oh, I just, I just love your guys' story. I heard a little bit from Carl. Uh, of course, he was raving about the geothermal when he came back. And there's this engineer that's just done all this, and his wines are, uh, he's just so blown away. So uh, I think don't he comes forget, the Mira. Mira, don't forget that I talked about the Turkish coffee before oh, I left the winery. Yes, and I heard that was also very, very, very good. <laughs> and uh, we're actually looking forward to hopefully ordering some uh, ice wine from you guys too to have for Christmas, uh, for Christmas with our family. So yeah. we're just so grateful for everything you're doing and for making such fantastic wines, but also for your time tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we thank want you. to especially thank you both of you guys. Uh, you're doing an amazing job okay. for all the small Canadian wineries. Uh, yeah. Because uh, the problem with smaller wineries yes. in uh, Canada, uh, you know, our uh, market uh, is very limited. So, you know, the big giant LCBO here, uh, I don't know what do you have there. Uh, so, but you're uh, same old, same old. <laughs> yeah. so, same thing. But you're uh, giving opportunity to small family wineries like us uh, uh, to drink local, hundred percent Canadian made, grown and made wines. And uh, we are seeing, especially this year, we've seen that a big move to uh, buy local. Uh, so uh, we're very uh, thankful to Canadians that support. Uh, uh local wineries and please go and buy uh, any canadian wine uh not just us uh, our neighbors our friends our yeah. colleagues uh, we, uh they are making amazing wines uh and uh just, i'm not uh, telling you just this uh canada will be uh, known for good wines uh is known already but uh, we're going to make much better wines in the next five years, 10 years. So I have a big uh, feeling about that. And yes, for, for one totally. of, and for, Was it ahead. you that was talking, uh, Adnan, about Robert Mondavi when he pioneered Napa? His theory was that the as far north as you can go, the cooler the climate with the grapes still yeah. ripening, the better the wines. Yeah, and here that? you are pioneering <laughs> yeah, this new region, yeah. right? Yeah, uh, I, I read that in Robert Mondavi's book. Uh, that's a phrase that I always use. Uh, you know, uh, I don't want to say anything, but, you know, California is getting uh, warmer and warmer. Yeah. And uh, they say that some uh, sometime in... 20, 30 years, it will not be suitable for uh, current uh, grapes that they are excelling right now. Uh, but uh, we are making uh, in Niagara, in Niagara, in uh, Okanagan, we were there in three, four years ago in Okanagan, uh, all the Canadian wineries are making amazing high quality wines wow. and, uh, uh, and we are only sourcing 10% of the consumption, maybe less than that, 9% of the consumption uh, is uh, local produce. And Canada is the only uh, wine producing in the country, uh, in the world that doesn't dominate its own market. That's I uh, know. It's crazy. It is crazy. And it's our mission, Mira and I, to be part of that movement, to change that. We want everyone yeah. to know that yeah. we are making world-class wine. And to, there's some good Chilean and Argentinian wine. But stop going to the liquor store and fitting up your cart 
with these little wines when we can provide you better homemade at yep. home. We believe in that. That's why yep. we're here. And yep. guess what? Yep. And, and please, if you ever want to give the winery to your kid, to your two boys for a weekend and decide to come to Western Canada, mm -hmm. we would love to host you and tour you around. We will, we will take you on the winery tour that you yeah. will remember. Yeah. I yeah. promise Thank you. For, you. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely do yeah. that. Thank you very much for having Thanks. us tonight and Thank you. enjoy the wines and yep. everybody. Merry Christmas and happy holidays happy to holidays. everyone. Yeah. Happy Thank holidays. Thank you so much. Both. Happy holidays. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was so cool. Oh, man. I have like goosebumps. Like I am so pumped right now. This is so cool. That sometimes like we have rough days or rough patches. Like that's why we do what we do just for these moments. Oh, I just want to bottle that, that last hours, that last conversation and keep it forever. It's just it's so very precious. special. Yeah. That's oh, really amazing. Man. Hey, these wines are available throughout the club, across the country, guys. And guess what? For $20 at the most for shipping. I don't yeah, know if three you guys Ontario, do. 10 to Quebec, and 20 everywhere else, which is a lot less than what the shipping companies are charging these days. I'll tell you, with all the craziness that's been around, they're, they've been hiking their rates. So we're getting a really great break on that and uh it's actually less than the gas it might cost you to go to a liquor store if you're like where we are where it takes 20 minutes so <laughs> you know what guys like and especially for western canada these wines have never been out west never before and if you're doubting of the quality of the cab saw this cab can compete with any California Cabernet Sauvignon. And that's 50 bucks. It seems like expensive. But if you go on the shelf in the California uh, section, you don't get a whole lot of Napa Valley. You don't get any Napa Valley Cabernet at that price. This is, this kicks ass like nobody's business. If you, if, if you don't believe it, try one. I guarantee you your, the, your satisfaction. So, yeah, wow, what a great story. Man, I'm so pumped right now. Ah, someone in our VIP group is saying this is one of the best Wine Wednesdays I've been able to attend. Great presentation. That's so cool. Thank you. That's so Amazing. great to hear. Well, hey, Mary, obviously, you have the link? we're the constant, so it wasn't us. It was this amazing story, so I just love it. Absolutely. And thanks, Mike. That's great. We need we need some help, Mike, to think about how we can clip these down to um, these great chats with winemakers. Marcel Morganston at Bellatero was saying, hey, you guys have probably gotten some of the longest amounts of footage that there is on Canadian wineries and winemakers. And I think it's true because we've got hundreds of amazing get togethers like the one we just had. And uh, and so, yeah, maybe we can clip some of these down into, you know, the notable moments. Might be fun. <laughs> Absolutely. Do we have the link available? Yeah, I can get that for you in a moment. Thank you so much. Because I think, and uh, if you guys were waiting for one pack to go for one last wine order of the year, don't wait. This is the one. And I'm talking with my heart here. I'm not. It's not a sales pitch. It's just because these wines are amazing, amazing. Um, yeah. So, whew, what a show! What a story! And I knew because when I met him in September, I came back and I can like I I couldn't put all my thoughts together. I was so excited when I was telling Mira about that whole sit down that I had with him. And like, how amazing the story. And she's like, Carl, like, take a breather. Like, I can barely understand what you're talking about. <laughs> so it was just like too much for me to, to report to her. It's just so much information, but so exciting. So I'm so grateful for them to show up. And oh, another, another thing that we didn't mention, they briefly mentioned at the beginning. Mm. They were from their home in Oakville, right? Yes. They travel 
back and forth every day, seven days a week, every day of the year. They may take like a couple days off per season or per year. They do the back and forth, Oakville, Niagara, every single day. And the, funny enough, and I was absolutely like, I was puzzled. When I, they told me that, he's like, I think we're looking maybe to buy something in the area soon. <laughs> it's been over 10 years. <laughs> Every wow. day. Yeah. yeah well, know. you know, with these projects, you got to really get them off the ground. They are extremely capital intensive and time intensive. And so they like, who was I talking? I was talking to a business coach the other day and someone who'd done many businesses and she's an investor and. And she's like, oh, no, I've looked at wineries. Wineries are definitely a passion project. <laughs> this is not something you do for the money because the slim money, at least in the you know medium to sometimes long term. So it's about the passion. And I definitely felt it from these two. It was awesome. With Simba in the car. Do you imagine? Every day, back and forth. <laughs> driving. You're still on the driving part, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, awesome. well, well, you know, because I do that every day to go drop off the kids and it's only 30 minutes and I have a beautiful, quiet drive on the side of the, the Okanagan Lake. Yeah. They are on the QEW. That's what Vicky is saying. That's not an easy drive, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So the Queen Elizabeth drive, like, like, wow. Yeah. Ugh. Every day. <laughs> yeah. So what a blessing. Thank you, Alif. Thank you, Adnan, both of you. Uh, thanks for, for being here. Thanks for the wines. And again, like, like we're tasting them all this week to review and build the tasting, the tasting notes. And you can feel the richness. You can feel the depth in these wines that you don't find. You barely no other wines in the country. Like it's, it's unique. It's it's a labor of complexity. It's a labor of uniqueness. Uh, so yeah, these are. It's not like you know. Some people will open these wines like whenever. Like these are special wines. These are uh, especially to me the arena, the arena, the uh, Wayana Wanda, the Cab Sauv, uh, uh, the the Sauv Blanc last night with our chicken uh, teriyaki. On um, on uh, on the bed of rice was pretty spectacular too. Yeah, I am just so excited to try more of these wines with our dinner. I'm surprising you, Carl Boucher, with a paella. I have everything ready to go, and uh, because it doesn't take you as long as you think it does, I researched it. Okay. <laughs> So, uh, yeah. Okay, bye, everyone. Fun. I have to let you go. Thank you. Have a good night. No, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh. We recently discovered paella thanks to Da Silva Winery here. They make the best paella in the Okanagan, and it's true. And uh, so ever since we had that in September, I am craving, like salivating over the idea of having a good paella. So, oh, so you know what? I would like to thank everyone who tunes in tonight. Who tuned in tonight? Everyone yeah. who are curious, who are not sure about what we're offering this week, take a deeper look. Go check my tasting notes. There's two wines in there. We're in the running for the best wine of the year. Not one, but two. And I tasted over 800 wines this year. Over eight, over 800 wines this year. There's two. In the same pack, in the running for the top wine of the year. So this is unique. This is special. Go ahead. Treat yourself. It's Christmas season. So Mira Boucher, thank you so much for awesome. uh, for helping me putting that together. It's, uh, it was a great show. Amazing. Yeah, thank that you. was super fun. Thanks so much, you guys. Cheers. Hey. Have a great evening. Canadian wine lovers. Canadian wine, Canadian wine lovers, Carl's Wine Club members, all of you across the country, thanks for being part of that because, again, it was something pretty amazing. So enjoy your world-class Canadian wines, and I'll chat with you next time. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>